take the pleasure and honor to welcome you to this first edition of Catholic Answers, Makere University, that is laid to you live on the different social media platforms. And in a special way, today we are going to discuss Lent and the Holy Week. For those of us that may not be aware, on Wednesday we are beginning Lent Lent begins with Ash Wednesday. So in this special session, we are going to be sharing together Lent and the Holy Week to be a few minutes sharing with you. And in case of any questions, feel free to share them on this platform. And I'm Victor Nashaba that is going to be leading you through this discussion on this day. Oh, um now we need to understand one that our topic today which is length we shall be sharing about the path to the feast of peace and easter as you very well know is the feast of peace and that path that leads us there is length and the holy week and basically that's what we shall be discussing and why is Easter called the Feast of Feasts? It's because it rejoices in the fulfillment of human salvation, finalized and completed when the Lord Jesus rose from death to new earthly life after having been crucified. Our Mother Church puts for us the Lenten season to best prepare us for Easter. Now what is this Lent? Lent is a 40-day liturgical season of fasting, a special prayer, and almsgiving in preparation for Easter. Uh, in front there we shall be able to understand why is it called special prayer. So we pray in this prayer, it is love for God, fasting is love for yourself, and giving or almsgiving is love for others. The 40 days are days on which fasting occurs, that is from Ash Wednesday to Holy Saturday, excluding Sundays. The reason fasting on Sundays is not usually done is that fasting is generally considered a penitential exercise, and penitential exercises are normally lifted on a solemnity of which Sunday always is. Each Sunday is also a miniature celebration of Easter Sunday, which therefore is considered a day of celebration and rejoicing rather than penance. So all that is a reason why we don't count Sunday among the 40 days that make the Lenten season. Uh, Ash Wednesday for this year, in particular 2021, Ash Day will be on the 17th of February. Uh, it begins the Lenten season, and we in a special way begin the Lenten season with the marking of ashes on the forehead in the form of a cross, signaling a sign of our faith and a reminder of remorse for our sins. We are told repent and believe in the gospel as we are receiving the ashes and there is also a certain phrase that is also used, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Ashes come from the palm, uh, from the palms used on palm sandy of the previous year. And uh, ashes we are used as a sign of repentance uh, in the Old Testament, also in the New Testament, but in a special way I'm quoting from the Old Testament. Next to me is a African Bible that I am using to make these quotations. Uh, Job, uh, in the book of Job, chapter 42, verse 6. Now, Job after all his suffering and having been able to see how powerful God is, he has 
your final answer to it and he says therefore I disown what I have said and repent in dust and ashes uh, the same when we look into the book of Jonah prophet Jonah who was sent by God to Nineveh uh, when we read Jonah chapter 3 from verse 5 to 9 uh, uh, Jonah chapter 3 from verse 5 to 9 we are told that when the people of Nineveh believed God they proclaimed a fast and all of them great and small put on sackcloth when the news reached the king of Nineveh he rose from his throne laid aside his robe covered himself with sackcloth and sat in the ashes so that is one of the applications of the or one of the cases where the ashes are used so Ash Wednesday we need also to know is a day of obligatory fasting that is from Canon 1251 what do we do in Lent a uh, key in the Lenten period are uh, the pillars which are fasting almsgiving and prayer that we have already talked about as we are defining what Lent is and these pillars can foster growth and appreciation within our collective faith and respective spiritual journeys. These pillars are certainly not for only Lent. Catholics are asked to practice them often, but in Lent there is special there is special and renewed focus on them. Ah, uh, we talk about fasting. So just like Jesus fasted in the desert for 40 days, we too are called to forego something for the same period when observing Lent. In this time, it's great to deepen our awareness of his sacrifice on the cross as well as Jesus' daily forgiveness of our sins and unconditional love for us. It should be noted, however, this personal sacrifice should be difficult but healthy while respecting our responsibilities. Difficult, for example, you may look at in this modern age, look at like social media. If you tell someone to forego social media, it's not something so easy. But then look at it as one of the things that you can forego. Look at watching movies as another thing that you can forego. It's healthy. If you forego movies, nothing it has no effect it will have on you. But then, if you look at something like a responsibility, let's say doing coursework, you cannot say because coursework are difficult, I'm going to forego them as the way of fasting. No, that's not right because you're not respecting responsibilities. But all in all, these exercises will, will realize they are somehow uh, physically we look at them as hard but then uh, uh, tears of Christ uh, uh, Cardinal had something for us that even in our penitential exercises Christ has gone before us to sanctify them to us he has breast fasting as a means of grace in that he fasted who is required to fast now fasting is required of adult Catholics between the ages of 18 and 59. The required days of fasting are Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. And then abstinence, which is refraining from the consumption of meat, is obliged for Catholics who are 14 years of age and older. Catholics are obliged to abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday and the Fridays of Lent, including Good Friday. The Universal Church law requires abstinence on all Fridays of the year. Why do we abstain from meat? Because Christ himself offered his body for us on Friday, Good Friday. So in a way, we abstain from meat on Fridays since Christ himself offered us his body. 
on Friday. Arms giving. This is also another pillar, and arms giving is a witness to fraternal charity and the work of justice, praising to God. That is from Catechism. So with me, I also have the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So this is from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 2462. So Lent offers us an opportunity to further concentrate on displaying acts of charity within our communities. It can be through the giving of time, money, clothing, or food to those in need. And this provides us with a perfect occasion to improve society by living out Jesus' teaching of helping him through helping his people. So someone may say, I don't have money, but at least you have time that you can offer to your neighbor. You, you have clothing. Don't look at clothing that you no longer use. Look at something that you know can benefit the other. Some of us, in most cases, just decide to give out clothes that we no longer use, those that are torn and so on. And for those that are part of St. Augustine, there, is always, there are always bags of love in which you can be able to offer these items that are later used to support the different people in need as a way of almsgiving. Uh, and we need to know that such offerings remind us of the variable need to remain disciplined and prudent regarding our own desires in life. And then there is prayer. Now, prayer is another avenue for self-growth during Lent that can lead us to a closer relationship with God. Uh, while talking with God is a practice Catholics and all Christians should conduct regularly no matter what point in the year, Lent presents us with an especially meaningful time to connect with our Lord and nurture our bond. That is why we call it special. All the days of the year, all Catholics, even Christians, all Christians are invited to pray at all times. But then in Lent, in a special way, we are called to connect with our Lord and nurture our bond. We strengthen the relationship with God through deeper and more frequent prayer activity such as scripture readings in a special way in comparative diocese, uh, the year of the Bible. So let's utilize this lengthened period to read the Bible more and more. We can have retreats, you can decide to go on a retreat, among others. Then we look at the liturgy in Lent. Something that is unique in Lent, one is that we don't sing the Gloria and Alleluia as most of us may be used to them. Why? Because all those elements are external and exuberant expressions of joy. Lent is not a joyful season, it is a penitential season. Of course, someone may say in Philippians chapter 4 verse 4, we are told that we should always rejoice. But then we need to note that during Lent, we are sober and penitentially preparing for the passion and the resurrection of Christ. So that's why we don't have, we don't sing the Gloria and neither do we have the Alleluia. And then we have purple or violet vestments. Some churches also go ahead to use purple and violet throughout the different uh, altar items that they use and then as you may notice the slides that i'm also using they are purple just to put us in that mode of lent purple or lent in the catholic church symbolize penance and mourning especially in this period of course later on you realize that purple and violet are used also in advent they are also used to as a as a symbol for waiting but then in particular in Lent they are a symbol of penance and mourning 
And then there is also another aspect that Catholics of a certain age may recall for some parishes, some churches, that crosses and statues are dropped in purple throughout the length, uh, and some just do it on the fifth Sunday of Lent onwards. And this is not an unmistakable sign. Sorry, this is an unmistakable sign of penitential season. The church had entered and invited us to embrace. So it's just a reminder that this practice is optional. And then, of course, after discussing Lent, there is also another aspect, which is the Holy Week. Uh, there is just that image of remember man that you are dust and to dust you shall return. It's just, it just keeps on coming on a different slide. It's just to remind us of those important words. So the Holy Week is the week that, immediate, that is immediately preceding Easter. It is also the last week of Lent. So the Holy Week begins on Palm Sunday as we have the palms and then Holy Monday, Holy Tuesday, Holy Wednesday, which is also referred to as Pi Wednesday. And then we have Holy Thursday, also referred as Monday Thursday. We have Holy Friday, also referred to as Good Friday. And then Holy Saturday. And all these are included in our week. Uh, Holy Wednesday is also referred to as Spy Wednesday for the Gospel taken that day of Judas arranging the betrayal of Jesus with the chief priests. So he's looked at as a spy among the disciples of Jesus. That is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, from verse 14 to 25. And then I am just speaking out a few days in the Holy Week. We have Holy Thursday. Holy Thursday commemorates the Last Supper where Jesus lays out the model for the Eucharist or Holy Communion and in this Christ also institutes the sacrament of Holy Orders. Uh, on this day, the private celebration of Mass is forbidden and apart from the prison Mass for blessing of the Holy Oils that the Diocesan Bishop uh, may celebrate on the morning of Holy Thursday or some other day close to Easter. The only Mass on this day is evening Mass of the Lord's Supper, which inaugurates the period of three days known as the Easter Triduum. Uh, just something for us to remember that the bishop braces uh, the oils, the, the oils that are braced by the bishop on Holy Thursday are in three forms. We have the oils for the sick, the ones that are used in anointing of the sick. We have the oils for the catechumens used in baptism. And then we have prism oil that is used in baptism, but especially in confirmation and holy orders, as well as in rites such as dedication of the altar and a church. So during the Mass of the Last Supper, it is important to note that the main celebrant does not give the final blessing. Not that he has forgotten, but it is just because it is the beginning of Mass that is ended on Easter Vigil. That one is important for us to note. And then we have a Good Friday, which marks the beginning of the Novena of the Divine Mercy. For those that know about the Divine Mercy that started uh, through the visions of St. Faustina that was declared by St. John Paul II. Uh, on Good Friday, it's the only day in the year that Catholics do not have Mass throughout. So on Good Friday, we only have what they call a service. On this day, we commemorate the crucifixion of Jesus and his subsequent death on the cross. This commemoration is often solemn and mournful, 
in which we perform the stations of the cross uh, where people move around as you meditate upon the different stations of the cross and also uh, there is a self-guided reflection and veneration of the cross and then we have Easter Vigil which is one of the longest and most solemn of the liturgical liturgies that may last up to three or four hours but in some cases it even goes to five hours and so on so the Easter Vigil is the Vigil of Vigils it contains uh, the service of the light, in most cases the Easter Vigil begins from outside the church where they light fire and then they press that fire and use it to light the Easter candle that is used throughout the Easter period. And then we have the liturgy of the word, the, the readings here uh, in a special way, they talk about the salvation history and then we have the liturgy of baptism in which sacraments of baptism and confirmation for new members of the church and the renewal of baptismal promises by the entire congregation and then we also have the holy eucharist just like we always have in any other mass something we need to note is that the 40 days of length are symbolic of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert you know in the gospel of Luke chapter 4 uh, from verse from verse 1 to 12 we are told about how Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the desert so in a special way it should remind us that in this period we should ask call upon the Holy Spirit to guide us in this Lenten period so, here is my question. What plan do you have for Lent? So, uh, for me to guide you, because while Lent may seem demanding and perhaps uncomfortable, its purpose is definitely not to cause us pain. During this important season, we are given an opportunity for self-examination in order to better discover both our identity as children of God and the beautiful relationship with the Lord that can flow from that. So as we embark now on this annual adventure in our faith, may we embrace each day Lent brings us as an occasion to advance spiritually and better connect with Jesus and our neighbor. Thank you very much for listening to me. I will be glad to take on all your questions. Thank you very much. Remain Victor. Shalom.